valuable? Well, faith and devotion are what take us below the surface. They're what actually ground us in that which is real. If you look at the ocean, here we are on the banks of the beautiful ocean. If you look at the ocean, when, when the ocean is turbulent, it's only turbulent on the surface. The waves only come on the surface. A storm only affects the surface. The depths of the ocean have no idea. It's low tide, it's high tide, there are waves, there's a storm. Nothing's changing in the depths of the ocean. And so when we dedicate our lives to only the most superficial, shallow level of existence, it's no wonder that, as Pooja Swamiji says, when the world goes up and down, we also go up and down. Because that's what we're angry at. And what our spiritual practice does is give us an anchor in something that's very deep. So as we had this beautiful Hanuman Chalisa chant, and I was reminded of a, a beautiful moment in the Ramayana where Hanuman, who for those of you who don't know, is here in the form of a monkey. I just, I just stood on the side of the ocean and I, I took Lord Ram's name, God's name, and I could fly. And that's what it's about. I'm not saying don't drink your tonics, don't take your vitamins, don't go to the gym. Go, it's wonderful. The body needs it. We've been given one vehicle. We have to keep the vehicle in shape or we can't do anything. But it's not the vehicle that drives us. It's us who drives the vehicle. And so who's driving us? Who's giving us the ability? to do anything. Where does that come from? And when it's not happening in, happening in our lives, where might we find it? And that's where Hanumanji gives the most beautiful and the most simple answer. I just, just take God's name and I can find. And that's what happens in life. When we're connected, when there's that faith, when there's that devotion, that which we need to do, that which we're supposed to do, that which is our next step, when we realize it's not about us, but it's about fulfilling our particular dharma, our path, our service, the tools come. And then later on in the Ramayana comes my other favorite Hanumanji story, where after the war has been won and Hanumanji has saved the day, Sita Ma is so grateful to him. And she gives him this beautiful, very, very expensive pearl necklace. And she says to him, Hanuman, this is very expensive, very precious. They're jewels. Take care of them. And so Hanuman, she says, yes, ma. And he proceeds to take the mala of pearls and inspect each one from the top, from the bottom, from the side, and then he, he bites it in his mouth and again looks at it from the top and the bottom and the sides and then spits it on the ground. And one by one he goes through these pearls in the mala. And she thought she's watching this and she says, Hanuma, what are you doing? I just, I just told you that this was a very, very precious What are you doing? You're breaking it. You're spitting them out. And Hanumanji says, Sitama, 
If it's precious, Lord Ra must be inside. And so I'm looking for Lord Ra in the pearls. Because you said it's precious, and, and of course if it's precious, well then my beloved God must be there, because if he's not there, then, then it's worthless. <laughs> and so in all of the pearls where I don't find wrong, I'm spitting them out because they're worthless, and I'm, I'm waiting to get to the pearl that's precious, where wrong is there. And the reason that I love that story is, particularly in this culture, I, I grew up in LA, and particularly in this culture, we are, we're really taught that that which is valuable, that which is precious, has nothing to do with spirituality. And of course, I don't need to say it, but I will, of course it doesn't matter whether you connect to God in the form of Lord Ram, in the form of Christ, in the form of Adonai, in the form of Allah or Muhammad or the tree in your backyard or the ocean or your grandmother or namelessness, formlessness, it doesn't matter. But where, where that divine is. And of course the divine is everywhere, so the issue then becomes where we feel that divine. Where we connect to the divine. That's what's precious. That's what it's all about. Because in all of our valuables, what are we really looking for? We're looking for meaning in our life. We're looking for joy. We buy things with the hope that somehow I'm going to feel better. Shopping therapy. It's been a bad day. I'll go buy a new pair of shoes. So there's a hope there, a belief there, that whatever it is I'm buying is going to bring me a sense of joy. But the real joy only comes when there's that connection. Because otherwise it's on that, that superficial surface level like the ocean. And when the wave is high, we're high. And then the wave is low, we're low. And the tide is in, we're in. And the tide is out, we're out. And that's not any way to live. Where we have to keep depending upon the next next pair of shoes, or next necklace, or next drink, or next fix, or next spouse, or next whatever it is that's going to gonna fill that place for us. And so the only answer is what, what our beloved Hanumanji teaches us, which is go deep, go below the surface. Have that connection with the divine. And then everything is precious. Wherever you are, whatever you have, it's all jewels. Because where the divine is, everything is. And where we don't feel the divine, nothing is. We talk sadly about things like blind faith. And yet it's actually only faith that lets us see. Without faith, we're blind. Without faith, we are relegated to this very superficial level. And that faith is what connects us to ourselves, to that inner strength that allows us to fly across oceans, carry mountains. That's the message. It's not just, well, I did it and the rest of you can go to hell. That's the message. The scriptures aren't stories to make us feel small and insignificant. The stories of the scriptures are stories for us. That 
that's what makes them scripture. So that connection to that which enables us to fly across oceans and carry mountains. And that's what the connection to the divine can do.